the soldier wanted to stop the riot. So he forced a passing motorist to help. The soldier. We had no other choice and I felt sorry for him. The Palestinian. For what? This is very common. It happens all the time. We found the soldier, a 20-year-old sergeant called Ran Schwarz, and showed him the videotape. His mother was shocked. I see this as a parent, and it's very hard for me to see this. We found the Arab, 22-year-old Fouad Yunis, a shopkeeper. When he saw the videotape, his mother was less shocked, more resigned to the occupation. Of course I am worried about my son, but this is for the good of the people. One day we will be free. Sergeant Rand's mother. It's a big surprise for me. I remember when he volunteered to join the Red Cross to help people. It's not what I expected. He was born after the Six Day War. Then I thought there would be peace. We would live together. My son is changing. When he comes home, he's a different kid. Serious, closed, quiet, nervous. We can't talk to him. He's impatient and restless. Of course there are changes. I am there. It's confusing. A war without rules. In a war I see my enemy. I kill him. Here you deal with kids, mothers like my mother. I'm not trained for this. Look, I'm not a violent person. I have the gun, the club, all the power in the world. I could really have beaten him, but I didn't. I just wanted to talk looking for a way to stop the demonstrators from throwing rocks. I didn't want to tell them to stop. I agree with them, with the uprising, but I was frightened. I was under pressure by the army and had no way to resist or to just get up and walk away. It is a very tragic and humiliating thing for me to see a soldier beating my son with a club. It is brutal and degrading. All these events are painful. It has been like this since the uprising began. We cannot stop now. Fuad's father drives a bus in the West Bank town of Nablus. Since he was a small boy, Fuad has taken trips with him. Little has changed over the years except the army uniforms. His father knew occupations by the British and the Jordanians, Fuad only the Israelis. I want the Israelis to leave my land. I am part of my people's stand against the Israeli occupation. When the riot ended, Fuad was allowed to leave. Rand said he felt sorry for him until he found out Fuad supported the PLO. As it turned out, he was not so innocent. He was on their side all the time. My enemy, but I felt nothing against him personally. Sergeant Rand continued his work and forgot about Fouad. Both young men put the incident behind them. Just one more bad memory of the occupation. Then, two days after their paths crossed, Rand was hit by a rock so large it split his helmet. It was an alley where stones, rocks, bottles were thrown at us from the rooftops. Like this. It was a huge rock. I drew close to a wall, and that's all I remember. I was hit in the back of the head. I was in a hospital for a week. Now, I've been at home for two months. I had a severe brain concussion. Now I have problems with my balance, my eyesight, my hearing. I get headaches and dizzy spells. I hope it will pass sometime. The doctors are hopeful. When we told Fuad what had happened to Ran, he wasn't happy or sad, just confused. My conscience bothers me. This is a tense situation. The soldier who beat my son has parents too, with feelings like us. They don't like their son to be beaten, and we don't want our son to be beaten. There is no doubt that we can live together. Yes in an independent Palestinian state. I think we should find a way to talk, to reach an agreement good for the other side as well as for us, too. After we showed Ran and Fuad the pictures, we asked them if they'd like to meet. They both hesitated, said, yes, why not? 
And this is what happened. At the meeting place, Sergeant Rand said he'd meet Fouad, but wouldn't shake hands. But 30 yards away, Fouad Yunus refused to meet Ran because he was in uniform with a gun. I know. The meeting failed because for these two young men, the gulf of history was too wide. It isn't easy to make peace. <laughs>